only begotten Son of God. That's a that's a phrase that seems to go over people's heads. The only begotten Son of God. Whichever way you look at it, it all points to Christ as being the actual Son of God. Whichever way you look at it, it shows that Christ is actually, literally, a Son of God. Not just a Son of God on the earth, but a Son of God in heaven. Let's say you look at it this way, that he's the Son of God only because he was born as a man on the earth, right? So he is the only begotten Son of God. So that means... He's, his birth was unique because no other child was born on earth through a virgin birth, right? So because he was born through a virgin birth, that means God begot him in the womb of Mary, right? But what about Adam? Was not Adam also begotten by God? So Adam is a begotten son of God, is he not? But no, you see, Christ is not the begotten son of God just because he was begotten on the earth. Christ is the only begotten son of God because he was begotten in heaven. But if he was begotten by God in heaven, then that means God made him. Let's say God made him. So henceforth, he's a son of God in heaven. But in heaven, God has myriads upon myriads of other sons in heaven. According to the book of Chronicles and in other parts of the Bible, we know that God has sons in heaven. Now, those sons in heaven, were they created by God? Those sons in heaven. Were they created by God? If they were created by God, then they are begotten sons of God. If they were created by God, then they are begotten sons of God. But they are but they are not begotten sons of God. How do we know that? One, because the Bible tells us that Christ is the only son that God begot. So even though God has many sons in heaven, none of them are begotten by God. Well, that's, that seems contradictory, doesn't it? Because if, if, if Christ is the only begotten son of God, then what about the other sons in heaven? Are they not begotten sons of God? You see? You see the confusion? Let me clear it up for you. Christ was made by God. After God made Christ, now that means Christ is begotten by God, right? God makes Christ, so now Christ is a son of God, but not not is not only is he just a son of God, but he's a begotten son of God because God begot him. Right? Okay. And then the scripture says, all things were made through Christ. So that means God made all things through Christ. If you're making something through something, that means you are not the one that's actually doing it, but you're doing it through something or through someone. So now all these other angels in heaven who are also sons of God. They are not begotten sons of God because all things were made through the Son of God. So they are begotten sons of the Son of God. They are sons of the Son of God because all things were made through the Son of God. So since they were made through the Son of God because all things were made through the Son of God, they are not begotten, they are not begotten sons of God, but they are begotten sons of the Son of God. So... The Son of God is the only begotten Son of God, and the other myriads upon myriads of other sons of God are not begotten sons of God. That's why Christ is called the only begotten Son of God, even though God has many other sons, because all the other sons that God has 
We're not begotten by God directly, but we're begotten by the Son of God. So that means that Christ is the only one who came from the very essence of God, the Father. So that means he is just like the Father, but he is not the Father. But he came from the very essence of the Father, which is different from what the other sons of God came from. The other sons of God came from the essence of the Son of God. So the Son of God is the only one that is like God. He is the only one. He is the only begotten God. Now why is he a begotten God? The other myriads upon myriads of angels in heaven. According to Psalms 83, verse 5 or 6, God Almighty himself calls them, all of them, he calls them gods. He says, I myself say you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Right? He says, I myself say you are Elohims. You are all elves. You are all gods. You are all sons of the Most High. Now, if they, if God calls them gods, who came through the Son of God, then isn't the Son of God also a God? Is he not a mighty God? But he's not God Almighty. He is a mighty God, but he is not an almighty God because there is only one almighty God, God the Father. The Son, who is a God, submits to God the Father. That's why the Son of God keeps saying that the Father is greater than He is. Everything that Christ said on the earth about His Father being greater than Him, about how He submits to the Father, about how He only does the will of the Father, He, said, he would say those same things even if He's in heaven in His godly form, in the essence of God. He would still say in heaven that His Father is greater than Him. Because as a matter of fact, the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, is a revelation that God gave Christ. Not while Christ was on the earth as a man. No. When Christ is back in heaven, at the right hand side of God, not as God on God's throne. No. At the right hand side of God, right? Get that straight, right? Christ in heaven, in the essence of God, his father, in all his glory, still receives things. From God the Father. God gave Christ the book of Revelation. And then Christ gave that revelation to his angel. Because all the angels belong to him. Because the Father loves his son very much. And has given all things into his son's hands. So all the angels belong to Christ. So Christ gave the revelation that God gave him. He gave it to his angel. And the angel gave it to John. Now let me cut it short. So I'll leave it here. If you like what you've just heard, just go to my channel, YouTube channel, Samuel Fojo, and you'll see all the videos I've made. And I've made different playlists on disproving the Trinity doctrine, which is completely pagan, disproving the Hellfire doctrine, which is also completely pagan, talking against Christmas and Easter, and the cross is a pagan symbol. Our master Christ, Yeshua, did not die on a pagan symbol. He died on a torture stake. Styros was what he was impaled upon. Styros has nothing to do with the cross. Styros is just a beam, a simple tree, a log that you're killed on. That is what he died on. He did not die on a pagan symbol. But the reason why this cross came into Christianity is the same reason why Easter and Christmas came into Christianity. So that the pagans can easily convert to Christianity if they were able to keep their symbols one of them being the cross another one being worshiping their sun god on on december 25th and easter the goddess of fertility and all the easter bunny and all of that so like i said i'm gonna keep this short so peace you would say but if god became flesh not the word it didn't say God became flesh. It said the Word became flesh. Christ is metaphorically called the Word, the power, the wisdom, the beauty, the intelligence. These are phrases. These are metaphors. The Bible is full of intell intellectual uh, um, form of speech. It is not to be taken literally. Okay? But you would say, but in the beginning was the Word, though. 
In the beginning was the word. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning. In the beginning was the word. Does God have a beginning? Was there ever a time when God began to exist? To speak of in the beginning with God is people. <laughs> Did God ever begin to exist? Was there ever a time if the word is actually God, then the word would have no beginning because God has no beginning. Nothing that's part of God has a beginning. Everything, that, everything that's part of God is eternal with God. His power, his intellect, his eyesight, his strength, his intelligence, his beauty is eternal with him. Nothing about God ever had a beginning. So the word, in the beginning was the word, then the word is not God. So that's how you know that John didn't say and the word was God. That's how you know that the word was a God. Because in Greek, it is up to you to put a God or God. But if you say the word was God, okay, suit yourself. But another person can say the word was a God. And I say the word was a God. Because the word obviously is not God because God has no beginning. Genesis 1.1, John 1.1. In the beginning, God, God created through his son because all things were made through his son, right? So in the beginning, God created through his son. In the beginning was the word. God created through his word, but not his, not his literal word, his metaphor, metaphorical word. Because God's word, his literal mouth is eternal with him. So it has no beginning. But the person who's metaphorically called the word, the power, the wisdom of God, Christ, as Paul said, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God, the intellect of God. If God made all things through Christ, then he can be called the, the wisdom of God because God is showing his wisdom through his son. If Donald Trump builds a building, builds a city with his intelligence and the co-workers and, I mean, and, the, and the people he paid to build the, 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 the empire can be called his word. They can be called his intelligence. They can be called the beauty of Trump because he's building through them. But they are not Trump. Christ is not God. God has no beginning. The word had a beginning. He had the, he's the very first beginning of all beginnings. Because the earth had a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth through his son. You have to put that. Because scripture interprets scripture. So even though it doesn't say in the beginning God created the heavens through, the, through his son. We know it was through his son because all things were made through the son. God created his sons in heaven. But he created them through his son. You understand? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth through his son. But that wasn't the very first beginning. Because even when the heavens and the earth were created, the angels were already made. Because in the book of Job, it says that the sons of God clap for joy at the work that God made through his son. So the beginning when the earth and the heavens were made is a different beginning than when the angels were made. And the beginning when the angels were made is a different beginning than when Christ was made. The devil, Christ said the devil was a liar when he began. So what beginning was that? That's a different beginning. So the difference with Christ's beginning, the difference between the word's beginning is that the word's beginning was the very first beginning of any beginning. It is the very first creation by God. And as a matter of fact, after God, after God made and created his son, God didn't create anything else except through his son. Because he's using his son to do everything. It's typical common sense. You have a son. You just you just created your first creation ever. You're gonna and he's your son. You love him. Hello. You're gonna work together with your son. That's your son. That's your right hand man. Like you know, fathers say that about their sons. Like this is my right hand man. This is my best friend. This is my buddy. I do everything with my son. I go fishing with him. I ain't gonna let my son die for nobody. But God loved the world so much that he let his son die for us. That's why Paul said we can never say that God don't love us because he already gave us his very best. And his very best is not he himself because he himself cannot die. His very best is he himself. But the difference is that he himself cannot die. So he sent the ne very next best thing to him that can be sacrificed. God has no beginning, but the word had a beginning. And his, the difference is that his beginning was the very first beginning of all beginnings. You would say, but if God was to become flesh, not the word, but if God was to become flesh, wouldn't the devil ask God to, to worship him? <laughs> really? If God, El Shaddai, became flesh, he is still God, El Shaddai. The devil would not dare ask God to worship him. First of all, because what can you tempt God with? This is God 
in the flesh. What can you tempt him with? Seriously. As if there's a possibility that God, El Shaddai, even as a man, that there's a possibility that he can fall somehow. Really? Well, listen. It's the word who became flesh. The metaphorical word of God who became flesh. The created being by God. The only creation. The only created being by God who became flesh. Even though he is the only creation by God, he is still a created being. He can die because before God created him, he didn't exist. But in the beginning, he existed. In the beginning of creation. He's the first of God's works and the only of God's works from long ago, according to the book of Proverbs. He can fall. He can fall like the other sons of God who a third of them did fall. He can fall like the devil himself fell. But no, he submits to the will of his father. Even though he has a will to not die, he submits to his God and father and died. Because he said, Father, if, if there's any other way, let this cup that I'm about to drink, this cup of death and, 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 and spitting in the face and wearing of thorns and dying on the torture stake. If there's any other way that this cup that I'm about to drink that I don't want to drink, if there's any other way that it could be passed from me, Father, please, <laughs> please. But let not my will be done, Father. Let your will be done. He has a different will than the Father. And another thing people tend to forget is these obvious things that just goes over people's minds because they go to church, they listen to their pastor, but if God, El Shaddai, puts himself into the womb of a virgin woman and is born, right? If God, El Shaddai, did that, is that baby that was born is it really a son of god is it really a son of god or is it god if god puts a put now god can't put himself in, 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 in a as a baby that's impossible people come on people you really see god as someone that can be contained in the womb. The best that God can do. Is take a portion of himself. A representative of himself. And put it in the womb. But that is not God. But let's say God did that. Is that baby a son of God? Or is that baby God? But you see. The scripture says. God loved the world so much. So much. That he sent Himself, or that he sent his only begotten son. Not the other sons that he made through his son. No, he sent the son that he himself made. He sent him. You say, well, why didn't God send himself? Because if he, you would say, because if God sent himself, that would show us that he really loves us because he sacrificed himself. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so why didn't God ask Abraham to sacrifice himself? Why did God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? I mean, God could have just told Abraham, Oh, you love me? You love me so much? Okay, kill yourself for me. To show me you love me. He could have. But God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. He said, show me you love me by sacrificing your son, Isaac. And then when Abraham was going to do it, right when he was about to do it, God sent an angel and said, now I do know that you love me because you did not withheld your only son from me. Now, Abraham had Ishmael as a son, but yet God considered Isaac to be his only son. Why is that? Well, God has many other sons in heaven, but Christ is his only begotten son. Why is that? The son who is in the bosom position of God. The Bible says, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom position of God the Father. He has explained God to us. Isaac is like in the bosom position of Abraham. Abraham loves Isaac so much. God loves his son so much. That's why God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. Because it was a foreshadow 
of what God himself was going to do by sacrificing himself? No, by sacrificing his son, the greater Isaac, a.k.a. Christ, Yehoshua, our master. Because if you think about it, of course God knows that Abraham was going to do what Abraham was going to do. God chose Abraham. Out of all the men in the earth, God chose Abraham. You think he would choose Abraham if he didn't know that Abraham loved him enough to sacrifice a son that God gave him by his barren wife? You don't think God knew that? Of course God knew. So why would God? No, the, reason, the real reason, if you look behind it, since you know that God knows all things, it was not to see whether Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. The whole point was to show what God himself was going to do by actually sacrificing his son. Abraham was about to, but God actually did it. So God is the greater Abraham. Okay? Christ is the greater Isaac. It's the same analogy. It's a foreshadow. Abraham is called the father of the nations. God is our father. And of course you would say, oh, but I thought God can do anything. God should be able to contain himself in a womb. God should be able to die. You would say God should be able to lie too, right? Like a lie, simple lie. God should be able to do that because God can do all things, right? But the scriptures clearly tell us that it is impossible for God to lie. He cannot. He can't do it. He cannot tell a lie. He cannot tell a lie, okay? It's impossible for God to lie. Does that mean he's not almighty because it's impossible for him to lie? It's impossible for God to die. He cannot die. He cannot not exist. It's not possible. Okay. Does that mean he's less powerful than what he is because he cannot not exist? Or does it not show how powerful he is because he cannot not exist? Like, do you, do you have to look at the cup? Half empty Can't you just look at it half full Like can't you just change your perspective Can't you realize that God cannot die So it was not So Christ is not God Because Christ did die Okay he was dead for three days But Christ can die Because he was created by God God sent him to die For God loved the world so much That he sent his son to die for us no, let me say that again. He sent his only begotten son because he has many sons, but he didn't send any of them. He sent the only one son that he himself made. So we got to keep skip, stick to scripture. He sent his only begotten son. Okay, so it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to die. There are certain things that God cannot do because he is almighty. God cannot contain himself in fleshly form. God cannot fit in a house, like Solomon said. Even the heavens of the heavens can't contain God. How much more so this measly little temple that I've built for you? How much more so a womb of a woman that God would fit into that? No. God is God. You would say, well then, how can Christ fit into that then? Well, because Christ was a created being. God can put Christ into any containment that he wants to because God made Christ. Because Christ is not almighty. Understand the difference between being powerful and being all-powerful. There is a difference. There is a difference. And we can't say God is the most powerful being in the universe because he is not in the universe. He is outside of anything physical. Space, time, matter does not apply to him. He's outside of that. You have to think about that. It's, you have to really think. God is God. But many people, <laughs> they just don't know the Father of Christ. Like Christ said, you don't know the power of my Father. You just don't know. You cannot know. Your mind cannot comprehend. You cannot know. You can probably try to imagine the power of Christ, which you really can't. But with God, forget about it. Forget about it. God is God. There's a difference between being mighty and being almighty. That's the reason why Christ can come with his angels. 
But God doesn't come with anybody. God doesn't come. God doesn't go anywhere. God is God. He is everywhere. He can destroy the devil and his demons with a snap of a finger. But Christ is going to come with his angels to wage war with the devil and his demons. God coming with his angels to fight the devil and his... Seriously, people? Seriously? Seriously? You take God to be something like that? That he needs to come with his angels? <laughs> y'all got it twisted. Seriously. Y'all really got it twisted. <laughs> but y'all going to find out, though. Y'all going to find out. How insignificant we are in terms of size. Okay, and how insignificant the universe and, and everything within it is in comparison to the Son of God. Okay? Imagine God. Now you would say, but Christ is God. No, 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 no. <laughs> you see? You got it all confused. There's a reason why Christ said to the Pharisees, you say the things you say about God. You question the things that God commands because you don't know the power of God. Right? Christ is powerful. He's extremely powerful. He's the second most powerful being in the universe. But he submits himself to God. <laughs> okay? God is inconceivable. I'm not even going to say he's inconceivably large. No. He's inconceivable. The universe is inconceivably large. Yes. God is inconceivable. I'm not even going to say he's inconceivably large. No, he's inconceivable. God is, forget about it. Christ is not God though. But he is the only begotten son of God. He is a son of God. Like the other sons of God are sons of God. But the difference between Christ as a son of God, the difference between him and the other myriads upon myriads of angels in heaven who are also called sons of God is that none of them are begotten sons of God. They are begotten sons of Christ because they were begotten by Christ. Because all things were made by Christ. Because God made all things through Christ. So that Christ will make all things. And all these things that Christ has made is for Christ. Because God loves the Son very much, as the scriptures very plainly says. But Christ is the only creation by God. So the sun was not so the sun and the stars, the moon, humans were not made by God. They were made by the Son of God. God says, son, let us make man in our image. Son, let us go down there and confuse their languages. Son, go down there and die for them. Because God cannot die. But the son of God, the only begotten son of God, can die because he was created. He was the very beginning of all creation. He is the firstborn of all creation. He is the only begotten son of God. Because he is the only one that God created directly... He is the only creation that is in the exact representation of the Father because he came directly from the essence of El, El Shaddai. But he is not El Shaddai. That is why Christ prayed to El Shaddai when he was on the earth. That is why the devil could ask the son to worship him because the devil knows this is not God. The devil knows that this is God and the devil would never dare ask God to bow down to him. But he knows that this is the son of God. The devil knows that this one can fall. He knows that he can be tempted to fall. But God cannot be tempted. But he, Christ is a Lord. God is also a Lord. Christ is a God. The angels are also called gods in Psalms 83. God is also a God. But God is the God of gods. Christ is the Lord of all lords. Nebuchadnezzar was called Lord, Lord of lords and king of kings by God. So if a human can be called Lord of Lord and King of Kings, Christ can be called Lord of Lord and King of Kings because he is. God can be called King of Kings and Lord of Lords because he is. But just because a human shares a title with Christ doesn't mean he's equal to Christ. Just because Christ shares a title with God doesn't mean he's equal to God. But Christ is not almighty. That is not a title that God shares with anyone. That is why the scriptures make it seem like Christ is, is God, but he's not at the same time because he is not. But he is like God because he's the only one that came from the very essence of God. So he is in the likeness of God. He is in the same essence of God. He is just like the father. If you have a son, your son is the exact same essence as you. He is flesh just as much as you are. 
He's going to have eyes and the same, he's going to look just like you. I look just like my father. The son looks just like his dad. The son of God looks just like his dad because he came directly from the essence of, of God. But now the angels are not the, es the exact essence of God because they did not come from the very essence of God. Otherwise, they will also be called begotten sons of God. But they came from the essence of the son of God. So they are begotten sons of the son of God. They are not begotten sons of God. Otherwise, all the angels will be called begotten sons of God. But there is only one begotten son of God. You see? Now, this begotten son of God, he's called the firstborn of all creation. He is metaphorically called the word of God. Not literally, metaphorically. That's why it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was divine. Remember, in Greek, there is no definite article. So it's up to you to put the word was a God or the word was God. But now, which one makes more sense? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Repeating yourself. Or in the beginning of creation, the word was with God and the word was a God. Because the devil is also a God. All the sons of God are a God. Christ quoted Psalm 83 and said, did not God say that his sons are gods? So what sin are you trying to stone me for if I am calling myself a son of God, henceforth making myself a God because I am a God? Christ is a God. So when God says that he does all things alone and that there are none with him, he's not speaking in relation to his son or his other sons who are technically his grandsons in heaven. He's not speaking about that. He's speaking about in relation to idols. Because again, I made a video on this proving that when God says that he does certain things alone, he's still using agents to do it. So he doesn't mean it in the sense that he's alone. He means it in the sense of idols because he's speaking in context of idols. Idols are made by men's hands. Idols are not with God in heaven, but there are other gods in heaven with God because God himself calls his sons as gods. So when God says that there are no other gods besides me, he's speaking of idols because otherwise he'll be lying. Because there are other gods besides him. Because the devil is a god. All the sons of God are gods. God himself calls them gods. And they are with him in heaven. So, you would make God seem to be a liar if you take him out of context. And I made a video on Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. Where, wisdom, where Christ is called the wisdom of God. Just as much as he's called the word of God. But remember, in Proverbs 8, 22, they will say no. It's just wisdom personified, right? And that it's not Christ. So, but if, if, but if wisdom is being personified, who's the person? And then Paul tells us that Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. So if Proverbs 8.22 is speaking about the wisdom of God, and it's saying that the wisdom of God was the first thing that God created, the first of his achievements of long ago, the beginning of God's works, then and Paul says Christ is the wisdom of God. Wisdom. Word. What are these? Phrases. There are, meta there are metaphors. Christ is the word of God. And he's also metaphorically the wisdom of God. Right? Now in Proverbs 8, it says that wisdom was the very first thing that God created. The first of his achievements of long ago. Now if wisdom is being personified and the person is not Christ but is God. Or if you believe Christ is God, then it's God. Right? Okay, then what? That means God created his wisdom as the very first of his achievements of long ago. That with the God's own wisdom was the first thing that God created. That makes sense to you? God had to create his own wisdom. God is eternal. His power, his wisdom, his intellect, his speech, his word, literal word, his literal wisdom is eternal with God. It has no beginning. But the metaphorical word of God, the metaphorical wisdom of God, the person who is metaphorically called these things had a beginning, not God. Him, Christ, had a beginning. Because to speak of in the beginning with God is blasphemy. God is outside of that. God is looking at his son, commending his son. Well, well done, my son. For the father loves the son very much, as Yehoshua, as Yehoshua himself said. But if the son is his father, then what? God loves himself very much and has given all things over to himself. And then 1 Corinthians 15, that in the end, the son will submit himself to God and will give back the throne to his God and father so that God will be everything to everyone. So that now no one will be king in place of him. Like David was king in place of God. 
when the, when the Israelites rejected God as their king, and so God elected kings on earth to represent him. And now Christ, the greater David, is representing God as king. But now Christ will submit to God so that God will be king to everyone. So that nobody will be replacing God as anything anymore. But God will be everything to everyone forever. But Christ will be still be our father eternally, literally. Because we, we, are, we are dying through Adam. But through Christ, all, all will, be, will be made alive. So literally, Christ has replaced Adam as our father. And begot, only begotten. For example... Adam begot Cain directly. Adam begot Abel directly. But Adam did not beget Noah. Adam did not beget Abraham. You understand? Adam did not beget Ham and, Sh and Shem and Japheth. Noah begot Ham and Shep Shem and Japheth. Adam did not beget them. But Adam, if it wasn't for Adam, none of them would, would, be, ex would be in existence. Right? So, God begot Christ, but Christ begot everything else. So, everything else is not begotten of God. Only Christ is begotten of God. But if it wasn't for God, nothing would have been begotten in the first place. Understand that analogy. So, the Trinity is a pagan doctrine. Hellfire is a pagan doctrine. I'm saying too much, but I love to talk about God. Man, I just could talk all day. My my uh, my my thirst will never be satisfied, man. It's, I go crazy. There's so much I want to talk about. But... Oh yeah.